Continuing with our exponent rules, we have the power rule. This says, if we take b to the nth power, raise that to the nth power, that's the same as if we take b and raise that to the m times nth power. In effect, we're just dropping the parentheses and then multiplying the exponents together. The common error here is not being careful with negative signs, so we'll have examples that show how we work with that. Now, to get a hint of why this is true, and we'll just do it with positive m and n, if I take b to the fourth power, raise that to the third power, well, the definition of raising the third power is just take what's inside, write it out three times, so I get b to the four, b to the four, b to the four. The product rule says to add the exponents, so that's gonna be four, four, four. We have three of those, so that's three times four, which is 12. And then that's the rule in effect. Four times three is just gonna to go to 12. For a numerical example, okay, let's take two squared and then I'm gonna raise that to the third power. So that, using the rule, is just gonna to go to two to the six. Let's count that up. So I'll have two, four, eight, 16, 32. And then for six twos, I'll get 64. Of course, we could do this directly. Two squared is just four, and then we're gonna multiply four by itself three times. Four, 16, 64. So that checks out. Now, let's look at some examples with negative exponents. We'll actually do these twice just to show that the rule with negatives is consistent. First example, let's do y the fourth raised to the minus four. So by the rule, what I'll do is, okay, we drop the parentheses, multiply the exponents. We get y the minus 16. I'll put that over one. And then for the negative exponent, we just cross the bar. So I get one over y the 16. Now, if I wanted to deal with the negative exponent directly, I could take y the four raised to the minus four, put this over a one, and then just cross the bar right there, which will give us one over y the four to the fourth power and then that is gonna to go to a one over y to 16. So that's consistent. How about a double negative? So here, typically you'll see the common error, and in fact, probably the most common error is that students will add these instead of multiply. So let's check this out. If I take x to the minus three, raised to the minus two, by the rule, we just multiply the exponents, so it's gonna be a minus three times a minus two, which is gonna give me an x to the six. If we go into the negative rules directly, I'll have x to the minus three raised to the minus two. I'll put it over a one. We'll cross the bar, which will change the minus two to a two. So we have one over x to the minus three squared. Then if I'm squaring, I'm just gonna take my item and multiply it by itself. Product rule is gonna say we add the exponents to get x to the minus six in the denominator, and then I'm just gonna cross the bar to get the x to the six up in the numerator. So x to the six over one, I could drop the one, and again, we check, we get the x to the six as before. Finally, come to what I call multiple base rules. The idea here is we have some expression in parentheses raised to a single exponent. The general idea is gonna be whatever shows up on the inside, everything that shows up gets that power of the exponent. Now, for a simple statement, when we're multiplying, that would be a times b raised to the mth power is a to the m times b to the m. So, a picks up the M and the B picks up the M. For a basic example, if we take 3X raised to the fourth power, then the rule just say you'll get 3 to the fourth power, X to the fourth power, 3 to the fourth power, we count it off, 3, 9, 27, 81, and that gives 81 X to the four. If we do it using the definition of fourth power, I'll take 3 to the X, multiply it by itself four times. I've got three times three times three times three. That's the definition of three to the four. X times X times X times X. That's the definition of X to the four. And we see 
the rule coming out when we do collecting of terms. As noted, we don't have to just use this on two terms. It'll work on any number of terms. When we multiply, we just distribute to m to each term. So if I had, say, minus 5x to the minus 2y squared, quantity raised to the minus 2, each of these three terms picks up the minus 2. And here, we'll count the negative as being part of the 5. So that's a negative 5. That'll give minus 5 to the minus 2, x to the minus 2 to the minus 2, y squared to the minus 2. And now I can use the power rule to clean some things up. So the x to the minus 2 to the minus 2, we multiply the exponents. So minus 2 times minus 2 is a 4. We have x to the 4. 4y four squared to the minus 2. Again, we multiply 2 times minus 2. That's a minus 4, giving a y the minus 4. To deal with the minus 5 to the minus 2, this is numerical work. So I'm going to want to turn the negative exponent into a positive 1. We put everything over a bar and then a 1 in the denominator. So that doesn't change anything. Now we cross over the bar to get minus 5 squared. The work's done. The rest is just clean up. Minus 5 squared is 25. The x to the 4 is in the numerator as usual. The y to the minus 4, we cross the bar to turn it into a y to the 4, giving us x to the 4 over 25, y to the 4. Now, if we're doing division instead, so this is set up to handle any term that's got a fraction with several terms in the numerator and the denominator. We'll have for just the two-term case, if I have a over b raised to the mth power, that's a to the m divided by b to the n. So we just distribute the m to the a and to the b. For the basic example, we'll try x cubed over 3, quantity cubed. By the rule, we put the power on each thing that shows up in the parentheses. So if I had x cubed cubed, Power rule says that's 3 times 3 is a 9. We get x to the 9. And then the 3 cubed is just 3 times 3 times 3. We get 27. If we just use the definition of cube, we'll take what's on the inside, multiply it out 3 times, and then we'll see when we collect our terms, we get the same answer. So this would be using the product rule. x cubed, x cubed, x cubed. You add up the 3s, you get 9. And that's still 3 times 3. Denominator, that's just multiplied out, you get 27. So that's the basic example. For something with three terms, let's try 2x to the 4 over y to the minus 3, quantity raised to the sixth power. I have to distribute the 6 at everything that shows up in the parentheses, so I'll get 2 to the 6, x to the 4 to the 6, y to the minus 3 to the 6 in the denominator. Now, Power rule again, x to the 4 to the 6, that's just 4 times 6 is x to the 24. In the denominator, minus 3 times 6 is minus 18, so we get y to the minus 18. And then 2 to the 6, we already worked that out, that's 64. Note, if I want to get rid of the negative exponent, I'll just cross the y to the minus 18 across the bar to become a y to the 18 in the numerator. We're now over a 1, so remember that's a placeholder. That's going to give us, when we drop it, 64x to the 24, y to the 18. Now, let's look at the big picture. This is what we call simplification. So I want to take all of our exponent rules with a goal in mind, which is we want our expressions with exponents to have these properties. First, I want no exponents on numbers. Okay, now if you got large exponents, not really feasible, but if the exponents are small, we should turn them into numbers that we could do with our calculator simply. We want to get rid of negative exponents, so that would be make a fraction across the bar. And then we want to collect variables, and that just means if we've got x's and y's in several places, we should bring them all together as one unit. Now, let's take a look. So let's suppose we have minus 5x squared, y to the minus 6. 
times minus 2 x to the minus 3 times y to the 6. As we saw before, we're just going to separate into the number parts, the x parts, and the y parts. For the number part, I get minus 5 times minus 2, which is a 10. For the x part, we get x to the squared times x to the minus 3. Product rule says 2 minus 3, we have x to the minus 1. Then finally, y to the minus 6 times y to the 6. We multiply, product rule gives us exponent 0, and we know y the 0 is a 1. So the y goes away completely. That gives me 10x to the minus 1. I put it over a 1 so I can get rid of the negative exponent. So we cross the bar, which is going to give us 10 over x. Let's try this one. So this one is peak difficulty. We have options here. So let's think about what we could do. If I focus on the exponent, then I can use our multiple base rule to give everything that shows up under the parentheses this exponent of 2. So that's going to be six power rules or simplifications of numbers. The better option is to take a look at PEMDAS, and PEMDAS says simplify in your parentheses before you go to exponents. And that's the way that we're going to go. So let's take a look. Again, we separate number x stuff, y stuff. For the number stuff, the 3 over 9 is going to go to 1 over 3. I'll leave the 1 in there just in case things simplify out the whole numerator. I don't know what the rest of the problem looks like just yet. We go to x to the 4 over x to the 6. Here we're going to use our quotient rule. Okay, So for the second part of the quotient rule, that means I'm going to target the larger exponents. So the x to the 6, and then the idea is going to be um, we move the smaller one down to the denominator with a negative sign. So this is going to be x, 6 minus 4, or x squared. So I get an x squared in the denominator. Then I take a look at the y terms. We could either do quotient rule again, or what I'll do is, a little bit easier on the brain, is to take the y to the minus 3, the negative exponent, we cross the bar and make it y cubed, y to the fifth times y cubed, we add the exponents and we get y to the eighth. That's a little bit safer than using the difference. Now, all the terms that show up are going to pick up the second power. Okay, note we got a minus sign, so I'm going to collect that with the 3 for a minus 3. And so what I'm going to get is y to the 8 squared minus 3 squared x squared squared. From the power rule, y of the 8 squared is just going to go to 8 times 2, y of the 16. x squared squared goes to x to the 4, and then the minus 3 squared goes to a 9, giving us y to the 16 over 9x to the 4. Finally, this one's a lot like the one on the last board, the last example, where we have an exponent. We're going to distribute it to three places inside the parentheses. So I have x to the minus 3, y to the 4 over 4, all raised to the minus 2. We distribute the minus 2 to all three items. So I'll get x to the minus 3 minus 2, y to the 4 minus 2, and then 4 to the minus 2. I've got two power rules. So I've got x to the minus 3 minus 2, minus 3 times minus 2 is a, a 6. Y the 4 times raised to the minus 2 is a 4 times a minus 2, so I get a y to the minus 8. And then for the 4 to the minus 2, rather than work it out here, it's numerical, I'm just going to cross the bar to get rid of the negative exponent. So that'll give me x to the 6, y to the minus 8, 4 squared, and note I'm going to put this all over a 1. I won't get rid of the fraction just yet. The y to the minus 8. I can get rid of the negative exponent by just crossing the bar, giving us 16x to the 6th power over a y to the 8th. Note, no negative exponents. The x is in one place, the y is in one place, and no exponents on our number.